Trump is dead. All right. So do we want to get to this beautiful article of yours? Because yeah, dude, it's, uh, this, it's not going to take all that me. long. Uh, it's not going to take all that long. This was a late night rant session that started out with with our friend Oz, uh, Oz the Boomer, Beauty the Boomer. If you don't watch them Saturday nights, what are you doing before you watch Snow Himbo Gaming? But at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific, um, we, we just, you know, he and I are talking about how we just can't believe that the Democratic, we can, but at the same time, are they really just going to try to pull this off and install a candidate without having any kind of discussion? Look, we know what happened in 2016 with the Beck lawsuit and Bernie Sanders and saying we can go into a back room and pick our candidate, but they didn't really actually do it. They made you go out and vote for Hillary Clinton, even if they put their thumbs on the scales to make you do it. They made you go out and vote for Joe Biden in 2020 by threatening Bernie with COVID, you know, made you, made you do the mail-in ballots and everything. But the point is, is people actually selected the candidate that ended up on the ballot. We knew in 2020, 2021, and 2022, because Jesse was writing songs and pieces about it, about you're getting ready for Kamala in 2024, right? We knew that Joe Biden was going to be a one-term president. We knew he wasn't mentally capable the first time, let alone for a second time in, starting at 82. So, when they went through the entire primary process, when they went through without, you know, really having one and saying, we're not going to have one, we're anointing Joe Biden. He's our guy. And we're all, we all knew that he wasn't going to make it to November. Um, and they all how gaslit us and said, how dare, how dare you? How dare you? He might, he might even, you know what? Joe Biden just died. I'm going to report it. No, I'm not, I'm not really reporting it. Just fucking with you. But Holy you know, shit, I'm, breaking Joe Biden I'm, has just died. I'm stealing Guys, Himbo's thunder, okay? <laughs> Joe but, Biden has just died. Rest. Oh, he's... No, never mind. He came back. He's back. Sorry, guys. So I'm having this half-hour rant session with with Oz, and it's 1.30 in the morning, and I'm like, you know, I should really write something about this. So I took a pocket, and I grabbed a drink, and I sat down on my computer, and I'm like, all right, let me just pound some stuff out and see what we got. Uh, not phrasing. Yes, that's what we do. We we pound a keyboard, um, and I grabbed some links and some stuff. And next thing I knew, I had most of an article which I finished this morning, published today, and it's gotten really a lot of attention. You can see it's already got forty three likes and forty eight comments and sixteen restack. That's a lot for one of my articles, even. Um, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you for everyone for reading it and sharing it. This is over at indymediatoday.com. You can you can go read this for yourself for free. Um, so my article starts that so we're all just gonna go along, huh? And the media is manufacturing consent with the party for Kamala Harris to be one of the leading candidates for president, and nobody is gonna try to stop it. I mean, to me, that is beyond stunning. And there's we have to become unburdened by what has been. As someone who is fiercely anti-duopoly and anti-corporate media, I can disconnect and analyze from the emotion of wanting a particular candidate to win the presidential election and analyze their behavior from a neutral perspective, right? Because in reality, I actually do wish both sides could lose, all right? I would like to see both sides stomped, but that's not going to happen, all right? I wish both parties could lose, even though one's inevitably going to win. Neither party gives a fuck about us, as George Carlin likes like to say all the time. They're only interested in their own power and owning the other side. All of the federally elected officials in Congress, the president, vice president, up to and including the people running to be vice president and president, are corrupt and owned, controlled and manipulated by the donor class. Yes, Trump, too. Motivated by greed and vanity. Mm -hmm. Or they're not and and or they're complicit in not, not daily fighting against that system, working to improve it or expose those who won't. Specifically, I'm thinking of AOC and the squad that were sent there to cause a ruckus and they caused the fuck us. All right. Mm -hmm. They brought the fuck us. All right. Every single one of them is is corrupt and com or complicit. I, I zero exceptions. All right. Bernie Sanders, especially. All right. 
dumb, informed, and think they're above it all. Right. So the elected officials are desperate to mask just how vapid, shallow, and yes, dumb they truly are about what is really happening in the world today. Ask any one of these fucking idiots about Ukraine. They'll give you the totally wrong opinion. 100% every time one of these schmucks. They have to toe the State Department line, which we know is wrong. All right. They have to be. Even the, the so-called rocket scientists like Lloyd Doggett among them. Right. They're handled 24 seven and spoon fed propaganda by sycophantic aides looking to climb the ladder, which in turn, which in turn reinforces those biases. Right. We're led by the C students and then they're lied to by the intelligence officials and take that as the truth, the gospel in their intelligence briefings. And then afterwards, they go home and watch the corporate media, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, OAN, whatever it is. And that further reinforces those lies and sells corporate driven narratives on top of it, sponsored by Pfizer and General Motors and Raytheon, because we know Raytheon needs to sponsor corporate TV, right? Many are chauffeured around, never buy their own groceries. Most never even use their own social media. They've got staffs that do that. They act like and are treated as elites. Half their motivation is to avoid exposure for who they really are. Mm -hmm. Right. So. So I'm I'm like screaming about this and it's it's 2:30 and I'm getting a little blind I'm like this is the environment in which these candidates and elected officials uh, exist a tight bubble immense power driven by ego reinforced by their staff and media used to handpick financial winners like Microsoft and Nvidia and Amazon and Palantir <laughs> all these organizations you can tell who the winners are going to be the people working at the networks and on government staffs don't advance their careers by being critical of the powerful. They're enablers and climbers. You don't see them challenging elected officials within their office. Promotion by attrition is a reality as career bureaucrats and executives leave. The money is so much greater in the private sector. Many also transition there for more money. Nepotism and privilege, of course, reign supreme. How many of the people went to Yale? The Yale connection in Washington, D.C. is insane. Right? Getting in line, keeping quiet until you can't take it anymore and bail is now the norm. And that's what we've been seeing. And now even the Biden administration officials and not officials, but the staffers that have quit over Gaza. They sat and watched that shit happen for nine months before they even stood up and started saying shit. <laughs> right? So... I just could not believe, right, that they rigged the primary and then Genocide Joe goes night, night, Jack. Like, we all, again, knew it was going to happen, and yet it still happened in front of our faces. Uh, the current state of the Democratic Party's 2024 presidential campaign is what I'm watching with a mix of amusement and fury. I'm amused by mm -hmm. the comedy of errors while simultaneously furious at their influence over corporate network media who are all too eager to manufacture consent for war and profiteering, as that is, after all, their real job. That's all their goals are. That's what they do, right? Forget that the party dismissed the primary entirely or didn't allow challenging candidates to appear on state primary ballots like Booby Kennedy. They used the media to effectively cancel and downplay the primaries, and that's the, the link to Simone Sanders on CNN going, there won't be a primary. We already have a candidate. There's not going to be a primary. We have the president. Right. Yep. And then they adhered to their own press to the precedent that all incumbent presidents have the privilege within their own party to run for reelection unopposed. Uh huh. Right. Not that any of the challengers really had a chance anyway, although Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson and even Booby Kennedy tried to run as Democrats. The party dismissed them and treated them as a mild nuisance. And that contributed to the manufacturing of consent that it was going to be Joe Biden. They anointed him first. There was not even a question. Forget about his age or forget about his mental competence. Forget about his record. He's automatically entitled to it. Yes, Beavis uh, voice said, he said, booby. <laughs> yes, because, and that's Butthead doing that. But, um, I've been calling him booby for a year because I can't take anybody seriously that I call booby and I can't take him seriously. All right. 
But of course, we all know that on July 21st, the Democratic Party's nominee, who I didn't even name here, who won all the states in the primary that the party held between February and June, they at least made people go through the process of casting a ballot, tweeted a letter saying he was no longer seeking the nomination of his party and would be the one term president we all expected him to be. And there's the stupid letter on his own letterhead, which is just weird as fuck. All of it. It's just he didn't endorse his VP in the there's so much weirdness. But remember, people in actual states voted for an actual name to be the Democratic nominee. That person then decided he didn't want to run next term anymore. Sure, fine, whatever. That's really insane. But that's not even what my problem here is. Right. The way it played out was bizarre and weak. Opening questions to whether that person was even still alive to draft and publish a letter. You know, it's like Carmen San Diego. Where in the world was Joe Biden? I mean, nobody knows. Why not hold a press conference about it? This letter was fucking weird. I know they said he had COVID. Okay, uh huh. They couldn't wait till he recovered to come out and let him actually say the words. No. Did the guy then really physically conveniently disappear for days afterwards? Yeah. That actually really did happen. He was and nobody said shit. And nobody said shit. Then days later, the cocktail hyped version of the current president allegedly gave a speech so energetic that many were wondering who that guy was or how full of drugs they had to pump him to get him that peppy. Or if it even was him in the first place. That's a whole other story with the body doubles and the masks and the Mission Impossible shit. And, and then the height, you know, the... Uh, He's the same height as BB. He's different heights. Uh, yeah, they're, they've definitely been using body doubles. But this is crazy. The rally round the old Veep. And of course, I had to grab the New Yorker of her sitting on top of the coconut, the Camelot. Holy crap. That is, that is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. That is just so bad. That magazine cover. I mean, who thought that was a good idea? Why don't it's you gotten, be like, vote for Kamala and we're going to make you sit through the fucking ice debates now. And it's got like, Obama and Hakeem Jeffries and Bernie with his mittens. All right. They all have big heads. They all have like oversized heads. What's with right, that? Including, Why did they put everybody in DK mode from Goldeneye? Holy shit. It's so it. bad. Right. I said, the media and the party have rallied around the current vice president. Now, the anointed one who just fell out the coconut tree, of course, we know. Right. Not even the candidate who was quitting the race could make a physical appearance to anoint her. Just a Zoom call, which he may or may not have pre-recorded. There was questions as to whether he was even live on that. Right. If you aren't on board, then you're definitely racist and, se and sexist. Why are you against a black woman becoming the nominee? She's qualified. Uh-huh. She's not at all fit to lead anything, let alone the U.S. military. She's known in lots of circles, of course, as Kat Mala, so she certainly does know the police and, and authoritarianism very well. But ignore that our office had a more than 92% turnover rate, and people couldn't stand working for her. And, uh, you know, I, all I searched was Kamala Harris turnover rate, and I find this Boston Times article. Now, that's not the Boston Globe. All right. And I don't know who the Boston Times is, but holy shit. Anytime you get a 92 percent staff turnover rate during her first year in office, literally the only person left was her. Everybody turned over. All right. Horror stories about their treatment under Harris dating back to 2010. Nobody wants to work for this woman. All right, so let's also, nobody wants to work anymore. Ah, the little plug for the show. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me, hey. Nobody uh, wants to work for Kamal anymore. anymore. And, and how about this guy? Nobody wants to work anymore. I no, guess. it didn't work. Okay. That one didn't work. Um, it didn't work. Okay, good. I didn't hear it. Um, back to the article. Let's remember that she is the real life incarnation of Veep. And are we all going to ignore just how embarrassing she's been the last four years or? Just how are we just going to be unburdened by what has been using her favorite phrase? Is she that real life incarnation of Selena Meyer? Right. Let's watch. Here's it's the Veep versus Veep. 
there's no denying the striking similarities between the real-life Veep, Kamala Harris, and Julia Louis-Dreyfus's character, Selena Meyer, in the HBO political satire, Veep. Obesity is a serious disease, and it needs to be taken seriously. We gotta take this stuff seriously, as seriously as you are, because you have been forced to have to take it seriously. Words have many meanings, and sometimes instead of <laughs> conveying our meaning, they can suggest other meanings. When we talk about the children of the community, they are a children of the community. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy but if shit. That's not enough, I, my mind is blown. But if that's not enough, let's, let's watch the favorite catchphrase. Just to show how vapid she is and how she is on talking point and on message, you know, greatest hits, kind of like Trump. Every single city he goes into, he delivers the same speech with the same words and the same greatest hits. Let's watch. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been. You know? What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened. By what has been. What we can see, what we believe can be, unburdened by what has been. What 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 can be, unburdened by what has been. I usually get through about here, through about 45 seconds. I, I, I punch out. I'm done. I can't. I can't. Yeah. Four minutes of this. Four minutes. It doesn't stop. It just, she never stops. It's every single day. She says the same shit. Nobody knows what she's talking about, including her, by the way. But somebody told her it was a good idea to say. I said, and everyone is just supposed to be cool with this? That there hasn't been a convention yet, so there's no reason why they couldn't literally open it up to anyone else who might pull better against their opponent. Everybody clear the decks for Kamala. <laughs> I love that. Right? Really like, like she's she the top cop. cop. She 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 was the top cop, and there are plenty of people that have done plenty of research into exactly how bad she was. I love the collage of all the, the black men that she locked up for um for prison labor specifically. Uh, and they literally made a collage of her face out of it. It's so good. All right. But if I put it on, if I put if you put it on Facebook, they'll take it down immediately. Somebody got to censor. But OK, here, here's my question. Who could it have been? All right. Perhaps the public would have preferred a current or former state governor who had actual executive experience. We were never given the option. None of the potentials are desirable. None have nearly the name recognition Trump has. But competence obviously isn't a qualification in the world of the people choosing the Democratic Party anointed one. That's clear. All the party deciders really demanded and required, apparently, are a name you know. <laughs> it's literally like the distinguished gentleman, Jeff Johnson, the name you know. All right. Mm. All the party deciders required are a name that people know, a set of talking points that are big enough to take on Trump, and they'll get the corporate funded media to manufacture the rest, voter shaming the public, and using identity politics to do it. You better vote for that black woman or you're a white supremacist Nazi Trumper. All right? Always. What's amazing to me is that none of the potentials, the other potentials, spoke out. Even as one of the senior party leaders publicly called for an open convention, Nancy Pelosi said, I'd like to see an open convention. I think she was publicly saying that while privately saying, we need to lock this shit down right now and make sure we got our shit together. All right? Mm -hmm. But they all just shut up and folded behind a person who's never won a thing as a presidential candidate? It makes zero sense. Because the party said so? Since when did they listen to the party? Because the donors said so? Well, they definitely listened to the donors. And if the donors said to shut up and let her have this, and we'll continue to fund your campaigns, and if you don't, we'll make sure that you're ruined, certainly the donors could have that kind of effect. I don't know if they necessarily did, but maybe. Um... Because they'll get hammered and lose their place in line if they speak out. Again, that's more like with the party bosses. And I don't think that they give a shit about the party bosses because they're all octogenarians for the most part. Other than Hakeem Jeffries, right? Um, Jamie Harrison, who's the biggest shit lib there is. Right? Who also, by the way, has never won a statewide office. 
<laughs> yeah, he's the head of the Democratic Party. It's fucking remarkable. That guy blew $100 million losing to Lindsey Graham, and he runs the Democrats now. He's the new Donna Brazil. All right. But here's the other thing. Nobody wants to ask the obvious question. Who thinks that they actually stand a chance with her as the nominee? This bullshit polling and this manufacturing consent that people all of a sudden are going to embrace her and vote for her when they've never given any indication they're going to. I said, hint, what they really want is to fundraise endlessly while lobbying shit from the sidelines for the next four years without being responsible for, you know, governing. Yeah. <clears throat> but what I can't imagine, I, I still get not one ex or current Democratic governor said a word. The delegates all just got in line. Nobody nobody's got a thing to say it's beyond astounding to me so i even tweeted yesterday you know not very many people saw it thank you fuck off elon musk i love how nobody's calling out the rigging of this year's candidate like it was just a guaranteed given all along when it's crazy it never happened before like the only time i could think of any kind of close precedent was 1968 right and this, mm -hmm. this does draw a lot of parallels in a lot of ways to 1968, this, this election year. All right. But that's when they, when Booby was murdered. All right. Or Bobby, Bobby Kennedy's father was murdered and they took out the candidate and they went into an open convention and you had riots in Chicago and people thought that it was going to be one or the other. I know McGovern ran against somebody else. And then in the end, Hubert Humphrey, who was the vice president under Lyndon Johnson, ended up the nominee when nobody thought he was going to be coming in. That's, I think, what the party is looking to avoid is a surprise candidate emerging from the primary, from a, from a contested convention. And here's the big question. Is it really just the Democrats throwing in the towel on 2024 and throwing Cam Cam to the wolves, knowing they don't have anyone to beat Trump? They throw her out as a sacrificial lamb and they're rid of her as a candidate for all eternity. And there's no way anyone's ever going to pick her again after she got annihilated by Trump, right? So is this the Democrats' way of also kind of getting rid of Kamala Harris? After the next three months when she gets stomped by Trump, we know she's so unpopular and cringe. Putting it on full display for months may be the best thing Democrats can do to ensure America never votes for her. I mean, it's literally, you know what it reminds, it reminds me of? The, the Labor Party with Corbyn, all right? Mm -hmm. How they smeared and undermined their own candidate as an anti-Semite to make sure that he lost, all right? It would have been actually good for Britain. Um, well, yeah, but they wanted Brexit and he was anti-Brexit. But like I said, finally, I close out by saying there are no more watchdogs. There's only lapdogs because the networks are lapdogs for access to candidates desperate to one up the other networks on an interview. So they're just propaganda dumps who believe everything they're told and then help the officials spin their narrative garbage to obfuscate the truth. They're worse than useless to people. They harmfully and willfully misinform them on behalf of advertisers and influencers. And of course, the intelligence community, which is threaded throughout all of the networks. That's completely normal. It just happens all the time in an, opportun an opportunistic country and party, right? Exactly. It, it never happens that no candidate would be opportunistic enough to emerge and say, Kamala Harris doesn't have the stones to do this against Trump I do, and I want to. Nobody's got an ego that big. I know one person who does, and she already voted. She already threw in for Kamala, and that's Hillary. I still think she's waiting in the wings, like like that guy behind the tree the, in the yellow in the yellow jacket, you know, licking her lips. I still feel like dude. at some point we still haven't heard the end of her. All right, dude. Can you like, imagine if like? Can you imagine if she somehow ended up winning? I winning? think that I, I don't even winning know the if nomination. That would even, it could be like winning the presidency. We finally have like a dark cloud descends over America. It becomes like Pride Rock, like after <laughs> Scar takes over and shit. <laughs> We're like, oh no, I, I, I don't. I never thought something would be worse than Trump, but oh my god, are those are those reanimated corpses coming up from the graveyard? Oh my lord. It's like goddamn. Because first of all, like, let's let's wind it back a bit. 
people preferred Trump because they were literally scared that Hillary, Hillary would start Clinton. World War III. Mm-hmm. They were and Joe Biden's in, doing it. That was a legitimate concern with Hillary Clinton. They were like, I legitimately, because she was literally, she was up there running and she was like, I will be more hawkish than Obama. And everyone's mm-hmm. like, what? Why, why are you saying that? Nobody, nobody wants that. Like it was, it, it was just, yeah, I don't know. But so I don't know, is going to be the last boss of America, I feel like at some point. So I'm wrapping up uh, the article last night as I'm writing it and I'm looking at, I open up Twitter and this tweet pops up like right in front of me. I'm like, Oh my God, this is perfect. Well, I don't know. Someone I don't know. Sobo Jopardai says, um, mm-hmm. I'm in awe of the democratic party. They don't have primaries. Candidates for, per- for president are chosen by POTUS tweet. Their supporters don't care about any internal democratic process. They'll rally behind whoever is given to them with gusto party discipline with vibes. I was like, oh, this is so perfect because this is exactly the, the the summation of what I was looking to say. Right. So I then suggested a new slogan for the Democrats for 2024. Quote, vote for our anointed, unelected, handpicked candidate chosen in a smoke filled room by donors and celebrities. If you don't, then you're a MAGA, Trumper, Nazi, white supremacist. Mm-hmm. We'll even we'll even sue the Greens off the ballot if we can, just to make sure people don't realize there's people to our left who won't vote for us. And I think that's the other reason why they sue the Greens off the ballot. They don't really want the, the they don't expect those people to vote for for them. They just don't want people to realize that there's actually people that are willing to vote against them to their left. All right. Now, I saw this and I was disgusted. I was most disgusted by the fact that this tweet had over 2 million fucking views. It, it went super viral. And of course, I it's mean, a manufactured consent poll. All right. Literally taken the day before they named her the candidate. She wasn't named until July 23rd. Biden mm-hmm. resigned on July. Biden announced, sent this letter on the 21st. The 22nd was an entire day of speculation. So they started polling on that day. They didn't announce till midday or the evening the next day that it was going to be Harris. All right. And then a day and a half of that. And this is what they get. 18 to 34 year olds from Axios. I mean, first of all, these these polls are all manipulated and bullshit. I don't believe any of them in the first place. But I said on top of that, she says, fight, fight, fight. Like they're believing this nonsense. Use your fucking eyes and your ears. You know she is cringe and unpopular. To believe something like this? Drive down any street in America and tell me how many Trump signs and how many Harris Biden signs, how many Harris signs there are. We're porked. And that doesn't even count. Now, here's the other thing. This is also an advertisement for the duopoly. Forget that anybody else even exists. It's either yeah. it's either red or blue. Nobody that's, else in the that's country exists. What they're advertising. A hundred percent of the voters. Picked one or the other. So therefore, there's yeah. nobody else. No. You know, this dismisses the 100 million Americans who refuse to vote. And it's exactly why they refuse to vote in a lot of cases. The sad reality is there are not many, really not many, and certainly not enough impartial, neutral journalists and independent outlets left to actually ask hard questions from a nonpartisan perspective in 2024. I'm talking about reporters who are universally trusted that half the country doesn't immediately dismiss for being partisan. And I don't know of one at this point that is universally respected across all party lines. It used to be Tim Russert was like the only guy in corporate media because you never knew what party he stood for. Now, in this in this day and age, there isn't one person you don't know what party they stand for, except for us, because we don't stand for any party. Mm hmm. All right. Everything today is intentionally lost in a bipartisan sauce of accusing those with legitimate challenges of being in bad faith, as if that matters. But especially if the question doesn't have a simple remedy or response. All right. Just remember, kids, that November, no, no matter what, come November, nothing is going to fundamentally change. No matter who wins in November, no matter who the candidates are, in spite of whatever fear mongering the corporate networks will scream. And. Uh, the the Ohio barbarian who is a supporter of INN, paid supporter on Substack, said, uh, "Well, maybe by all the flack you're getting from all these Democrat troll, Democrat 
trolls in this thread, I'd say you must be over target. And I did get a couple of car hysterical Karen, this woman, Nancy flipping out for a while and calling somebody else a white supremacist and I'm deluded. Right. But then it's, it's so funny because sorry, I think you're deluded. And I said, the Democrats are the ones that are criminalizing protest and dissenting speech, but keep blaming one side instead of the, the uniparty that they all belong to. I love how you call me delusional and tell me not to be condescending while simultaneously being condescending. Perfect Kamala voter. Thanks for making my point. You accepted what you were spoon fed and now you're shaming others into accepting it too. No thanks, sister. Peddle that nonsense elsewhere. I mean, it, it, this one I, I, wanted, I wanted to show you because I knew you'd be proud. And mm -hmm. I think this guy is, I think he's from South Dakota. Right, all Marxists of an orthodox persuasion and all students of Gnome should be outraged, but don't neglect embracing your groucho revisionist tendency. I see a fun-filled election campaign season, a veritable treasure trove of sublimated misogynistic and ethnic poss humor possibilities should can prevail, right? The only problem is, is that there's zero Marxist about capitalist Kamala. This is their narrative that they're going with. They are absolutely insisted that she's a communist and a, and and the farthest extreme person because this is how it has to be literally and i realize that what the democrats are trying to do is make it that kamala is the only person standing between trump and democracy you have to vote for her or you're abandoning democracy that's literally their the, what they're down to well first and foremost um the sooner that americans understand and Canadians as well. Understand that you cannot live under a democracy with first past post voting because it's inherently not democratic. And the sooner you realize that all of these behaviors for any sort of third party candidates results in the same lack of democracy, you need to realize that you are not going to vote your way out of your situation. And the second you do that, you will arrive at a conclusion that we have to take other measures and as such we need to stop buying in to this fucking electoralism and it drives me insane even in independent spaces how everybody's just like oh my god we have to cover election shit all the time every day no shut no we don't shut the fuck up start talking about stuff that's actually going to produce meaningful change I know it's good content and it gets good views and likes and whatever to talk about this banal garbage 24 seven, but it doesn't fucking matter. Do you really think that Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, like just ask yourself out of these two options, which one do you vote for to end imperialism? Uh, none uh, of the not, above. Not, neither of them. Because they're both going to keep doing fucking war. Which one of these do you vote for to improve the material conditions of the working class? Oh, none of them? They don't care? Go back to the Biden-Trump debate. Go to the beginning where they ask about the economy. Report back to me when, when you hear their answer to the economy. Because Trump's answer was, well, it's it's the immigrants. If we just like secured the border, the the economy will be fixed, which is brain dead. A, a 12 year old can tell you that's stupid. And Biden just dial up noises. <laughs> Nobody cares about your material conditions. They don't care either about stopping any of the prime aims of the ruling capitalist class. And, and listen, I know everybody loves Jill Stein. I love her too. But people should at least, they should even be thankful that she isn't allowed to get into office. Because would you really want your heart broken when she does get into office and just starts magically doing all of the shit that she said she wasn't going to? Because that's how this game is played. Nobody winds up in the White House and just changes changes all of the directions of empire. That's not how this game is played. 
No, she just Never. failed upwards yeah. continuously, like the consummate case of failing upwards every single time. Just happened to be in the right place at the right. Look, how did she get into the Senate in the first place? I believe it was Barbara Boxer or somebody resigned and she was appointed by the existing governor, which was, I think, even Newsom. Um, it might have been Jerry Brown. And um, and that way she could run as an incumbent. They always gave her like that little extra boost up. She never actually had to get like from scratch earn the same thing that everybody else always did. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to talk about, you know, and I'm not against affirmative action or DEI, but that literally was like, you know, that's the kind of thing that that drives the right wingers crazy and goes, she was given advantages. Nobody else did. It was given privilege and bit and squandered the fuck out of it. And oh yeah. Then there's the whole question of, is she African American? No, she's, She's Indian Jamaican, and that's a whole other stupid talking point. Does it matter? No. Uh, but the fact that she was raised in Canada it is is relevant. All right. That's atrocious. She, no, no she Canadian went, should be allowed to do anything. It's grade disgusting. school, high school, and some college. Like mm -hmm. she wasn't raised in the U.S. school systems. But she wants to be president over all of it. I don't know. I mean, at, at this point, I think she's just going for like she's like everything else. I'll put it this way. All of these candidates are just empty shells for the demands of the Western Empire. The only reason why Donald Trump seems different is because he's a narcissist. And therefore, there are two fundamental factors there. To be more specific, he's a grandiose narcissist, which means he can't hide his narcissism. A lot of these politicians are covert narcissists insofar as they can hide their narcissism because at the end of the day, it achieves the same ends. But what it means for yeah. Trump is he can't respect boundaries, which we've seen a million times before. <laughs> and he 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 puts validation before anything else. So he was always a good little puppet for the deep state. If you don't if you don't believe that as a fundamental fact, then you need to go look up what he did during his administration and his history and his ties, because it is very clear. He's a very loyal puppet of the deep state. But the reason why it seems different is because he needs to say anything he can to get the maximum amount of validation because he's min maxing overcompensation for the fact that he cannot regulate his self-esteem like normal, well-adjusted human beings. And he can't hide it like a lot of the covert narcissists. Who are in politics in the West. He's literally a WWE character at this point. I mean, you can predict, you can predict what the heel at a WWE uh, uh, event is going to do. And that's what Trump's going to do in a lot of cases. And sometimes he'll surprise you and give you a little face. But for the most part, he plays the heel and he loves playing the heel. He loves getting the booze. He loves the media hating him. As long as they're talking about him, that's all that matters. Um, For a personality and, like Trump, it the the attention doesn't matter. The point is the attention. If everybody just stopped paying attention, he, yep. he's literally Tinkerbell. It's if what he, I've been saying about corporate media forever. Like yeah. literally, stop if, paying attention. If, if like if people just stop paying attention to Trump, he would crumble in a second. He needs the attention. That's why do you think he can do those fucking four hour rallies? Because it's attention that is feeding him, that is correcting a deficiency that he does not have within himself. Like, yeah, I couldn't do a four-hour rally. Are you kidding? After an hour, I would probably take a nap right on stage. <laughs> dude, dude just loves to hear himself talk. And again, he he ran through all the hits, and and he always does. It's always the same ten points. But he also, but he also turning, did it. He did it to show that Biden couldn't stand up for that length of time and deliver a speech for that length of time and that he's got, you know, again, validation. Remember, that's that's his first motivation is to show that he's got, you know, he's got balls and he's the manly man president who shits on a golden toilet. Yes. And owns a golf club. Uh huh. Anyway. Anyway.